Um, I think we just about got up to here when Simon Loveless shows up at Arthur Underwood's house and uh, the brown stuff's about to hit the fan. And we hear Arthur Underwood say to Nathaniel, this is, all, this is after he's already discovered the pentacle, the charm, Adelbrand's, you know, curse, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the doorbell rings and Loveless shows up. And we hear on 268, Traitor, you have betrayed me. I shall discover who is guiding you to spy on me. Now, he calls him a traitor because he realizes that Nathaniel has sent an imp down to spy on him in the, via the scrying glass. Okay? Prepare yourself. I shall come for you. Underwood's head descends back through the floor and such. And... The imp says some things. Nathaniel tells it to shut up. And the imp says, page 269. Look, do us a favor. You haven't got much time left. Couldn't you just free me now before you die? Life gets so dreary in this disc. You don't know how lonely it gets. Go on, boss. I'd really appreciate it. Okay? So what... Does the imp really think Nathaniel's going to do that? Probably not. So why does he ask? Worth a shot, okay? When he asks that, what's he appealing to? Then I, I don't mean who. What in Nathaniel is the, the imp, the demon, appealing to? His sense of what? Mercy? Morality? Decency? Fair play? Well, from what we've seen thus far in the novel... How much decency, mercy, morality, fair play does Nathaniel have? Okay, pretty close. Pretty close to none. Yep, yeah, he's really angry. Come on, you're a big magician now, bottom of 269. Call something up to save your skin. In a freak, maybe. That should do the job. Or, or what about that Bartimaeus? Well, where is Bartimaeus? As far as Nathaniel knows, not coming. So there's there's something wrong. He has summoned him, and he hasn't returned. Because in the, the, the universe that Stroud creates, when a wizard, sorry, when a magician summons a spirit, that spirit is supposed to come immediately. Well, it's been hours since he's returned. Nathaniel doesn't understand why. Other than he's heard about the big disturbance, the scrying glass kind of gave him a, a bit of an indication, and we hear, top of 270, the imp again. Notice the imp's feeling a little bold, a little daring. Why not? He's going to die, essentially, if something bad, if death happens to Nathaniel, what's going to happen to this imp? It will be forever encased inside the scrying glass. Because Nathaniel won't be there to remove the spells. Remember what will happen to Bartimaeus? If Nathaniel doesn't retrieve that tin within 30 days? Top of 270. <coughs> Nasty, ain't it? The imp's voice dripped with satisfaction. Being at someone else's mercy. Now you know what it feels like. In other words, you, in this situation, are just like me all the time. All the time, what is the, the imp doing? Or, or what's his existence dependent upon? Nathaniel. Now, Nathaniel has to wait for what? For Underwood to finally decide what he's going to do. Okay? So, he's stuck in that room, that garret, like the imp stuck in the scrying glass. Face it, kid. You're on your own. You've got no one there to help you. Well, go back to 
one of the first lessons Nathaniel learned about magicians. What's their power? Where does their power lie? In the spirits. Okay. And what's the big secret? Without them, they're nothing. Nathaniel's learning that lesson the hard way. Okay. He calls Bartimaeus again in. Tap on the window, and there's Bartimaeus in his pigeon form. Okay. We see Underwood standing at the door. Who's controlling you? Which of my enemies? Is it Duvall? Is it Mortensen? Is it Loveless? He says, nobody. Who taught you to make the glass? Nathaniel. I did. I did it on my own. And that's when we hear Simon Loveless has shown himself into the house. Okay. So. Let's see here. Bartimaeus, as I said, shows up, takes the form of the dark-skinned boy, page 273. The false boy surveyed the bare floorboards and piles of junk. Who's been a naughty little magician then? What's Bartimaeus thinking? Underwood's cotton on to you at last, I see. He took his time. In other words, the guy's adult. Took him long enough. Okay? So, Nathaniel says, you brought Loveless here. Um, the tin, the rosemary, yeah, it's going to be forever. What? Don't lie to me, demon. You betrayed me. You left it here. Loveless? Where? Downstairs. Not me. Uh, what's, what's Bartimaeus' ace in the hole? Why wouldn't he bring Loveless? Old Chokey, the tobacco tin. If I bring Loveless, you get caught. He says, I'm screwed for an awful long time. I've got a tobacco tin to think of, bottom of 273. It is a slight coincidence, that is. It is a coincidence that I show up and Loveless shows up just a few minutes later. You've led him here, you fool. Bartimaeus, nope, not a chance. 274. If Loveless is here, he'll have stationed a dozen spheres outside. They'll home in on its aura and be on me the moment I leave the building. Because Nathaniel said, take the amulet, leave. He's trying to get the point across. You shouldn't have done this because now you're going to pay the price. Can it, Nat? You're not in the pentacle now. You can't force me to obey each new order, page 274. Running off with the amulet will be fatal. Take it from me. In other words, believe me. So how strong is Underwood? He's, 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 okay. Notice, Bartimaeus doesn't know the answer. This is an honest question. So, can your master put off Simon Loveless? What did Bartimaeus hear about Simon Loveless? How powerful is he? Is he super powerful? He's quite powerful. He's quite powerful, but he's more flash than he is real substance. All right? How strong? Come on, what level? I assume from the size of that beard, he's no great shakes. But I might be wrong. How good is he? Could he beat Love? No. Okay, so your one chance, Bartimaeus says, is if Loveless finds the amulet, he might want to keep the whole thing quiet. He may try to do a deal with Loveless. You don't think he'll... He says, oops, sorry. Know ye that I have devotedly carried out my charge, I have spied on Loveless, I brought the secrets of the amulet, I have risked all for you, my master, and the results are, you're an idiot! Okay, keep in mind, he's still only 12. You've no idea what you've done. That is, when he stole the amulet, did he know what the amulet actually did? No. Did he know where, whose hands the amulet had actually been in? No. Did he know how Simon Loveless came by the amulet? No. Not entirely, at least. The amulet is so powerful, it's been in government keeping for decades until Loveless had it stolen. So, who did Loveless steal it from? If it's been in the government's keeping, he stole it from the government. 
So that puts Loveless in what position slash relationship with the government? He's a traitor. The very same word Arthur Underwood used to describe Nathaniel. His assassin murdered a senior magician for it. Senior magician means what? Senior magician what? Official of the government. Okay. In those circumstances, I don't think it's likely he'll worry about killing Underwood to retrieve it. Do you? In other words, Bartimaeus is saying, um, you better start thinking fast. Because if he's willing to kill a senior member of the government, what, what does that mean? A senior magician for it. This is like an undersecretary of state. Undersecretary doesn't mean peon. That's somebody pretty, pretty high up. Okay. To Nathaniel, the room seemed to spin. We can't just stand here. We've got to do something. True. I'll go and watch developments. Meanwhile, you better stay here like a good little boy and be ready for a quick exit. I'm not running anywhere. And he thinks, Mrs. Underwood. Why does he think of her? Does he say Mrs. Underwood because he thinks she might be able to help him? No. He doesn't want anything to happen to her. He doesn't want anything to happen to her. How do you know? Look at Bartimaeus' next words. I'll give you a tip born of long experience. How long? Well, he's been on Earth 5,000 years. Running's good if your skin needs saving. Better get used to the idea, bud. It's, it's almost like Bartimaeus is seeing into the future a little bit. Go up to your room and wait. I'll tell you what happens soon enough and be prepared to move fast. Be prepared to move fast implies what on Bartimaeus' side? Okay, what else though? Okay, what else? What is Bartimaeus implying? Exactly. He's going to help. In other words, when I get back, you better be prepared, you know, for whatever I tell you. Okay? So, 276 and following, we hear Loveless and Underwood talk. And Loveless says, top of 277, uh, you seem flustered. He says, no, 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 I was like, at the top of the house, I'm, I'm out of breath, okay? Um, so Underwood invites him to sit down. He says, no, I don't think so. He says, well, what can I do for you? Loveless gets right to the point. Something powerful was stolen from me a few days ago. It's in connection with this, top of 278. I've called on you. Underwood says, well, you, you know, I'll help you whatever I can do. These thefts are an abomination, blah, 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 blah. Um, Loveless says, I think a fellow magician might be behind it. Underwood's like, really? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, mentions Bartimaeus by name. Top of 279. It goes by the unseemly nature, excuse me, the unseemly name of Bartimaeus, a middle-ranking genie of great impudence and small intelligence. Great impudence means it smarts off a lot and doesn't pay proper respect, okay? And, then, you know, Bartimaeus has this funny little footnote. It is nothing special. Any half-wit might have summoned it. A half-wit magician, that is, not a commoner. Well, what did... Underwood say when he caught Nathaniel with the pentacle under the carpet. 14th level demon. So not some middle ranking. Bartimaeus is pretty high. Okay. Not an Ifrit, not a Folia, not a Madrid, Merid, sorry, not Madrid. Um, so Underwood says, Bartimaeus has your thing? He says, yes. So who summoned it? Well, that's why I'm here. And there's a pause, and he goes, sorry? Well, what was that? Bartimaeus has not been keeping a low pro profile lately. As of this morning, it was imprisoned within the Tower of London following its attack on pins. Okay, they keep talking. 
And my agent spotted it, and they followed it here. Here. No, you lie. Disappeared down your chimney 10 minutes ago. But I would never have guessed it was you, Arthur. Not that I didn't think you coveted my treasures. I just thought you lacked the competence to take them. Lacked the competence would mean what? Go back to one of the early lessons about Magicians and power. Bingo. Lack of competence makes you a bad magician. Okay? So Underwood is, excuse me, Loveless is saying, I never thought you were a good magician. Not moral good, ability good. The old man opened and shut his mouth like a goldfish without really saying anything. Loveless keeps going. I could have forced an heir to your house, entry to your house, Arthur. It would have been quite within my rights. But, you know, I want to be courteous, etc., etc. And finally, Underwood's heard enough. And poof, he blows. You pompous upstart. Why an upstart? What is an upstart? It's a young person kind of taking upon him or herself the duties, the rights, the responsibilities of someone older, someone more senior in position, okay? How dare you accuse me of theft? I haven't got your object. This is 281. I know nothing of it, want it even less. Why should I take it? I'm not a political lick spittle like you. It's like brown noser, okay? I don't suck up to others in order to rise. I'm no funny backstabber. I don't go grubbing about after power and influence like a hog in a cesspit. Well, why not? Because he's perfectly happy being a junior minister, being a middling to low level, quote unquote, staffer. Okay? He says, I don't know anything about Bartimaeus and your trinket isn't here. Okay? So, Loveless threatens him, and let's see. Loveless demands 284 to be taken to Underwood study. He says never, and they go. Um... Chapter 29 is Nathaniel. He's standing. He's thinking. He's trying to figure out what to do. He hears the clinking of the china on the tray that Mrs. Underwood carries because she's going in to offer Simon Loveless tea. And we're told 287. She comes in. She brings Nathaniel tea. And in that moment, Nathaniel quite forgot his own predicament. Mrs. Underwood was in danger. He forgets his own troubles, and he thinks for once of somebody else. The enemy was in the house. In a few moments, he would doubtless force or persuade Underwood to open his study for inspection, and what's he going to find? The amulet. What might Underwood, what might Lovelace do to Underwood or his wife? Notice, he thinks Underwood first, and then Martha. All right? So... He doesn't do what Bartimaeus says. He doesn't stay in his room and plan his escape. He starts to sneak downstairs. In sneaking downstairs, one, what's he doing? In two, um, I'll answer the first one first. What's he doing? What's he thinking of doing? Does he have any thoughts at all? So he's just walking downstairs. Okay, he's not planning it out. Is he going to get the amulet right? I mean, is that what he's thinking of right now? Or is he just going down to kind of get an eye on things? To see how this is going to play out? Okay. He hears Mrs. Underwood's voice. 
he hears Arthur say, I'm showing Loveless something in my study, thank you, we need nothing, in a dull, weary, almost unrecognizable voice. Why? Because he's under the power of Loveless. Okay? The go past, he sees Underwood's face, bottom of 288. Despite his extreme, excuse me, despite his extreme dislike of his master, to see him in that state rebelled against everything Nathaniel had been taught. Well, what had he been taught? What does an apprentice show to the master? Respect, duty, devotion, care, concern, all those things. Even, notice, I mean, Nathaniel's kind of thinking this. Even though, what had, how does he think of Underwood as his master at this point? He's not. He's useless. Why? Because he allowed Loveless to humiliate him and didn't defend him. In other words, he didn't keep his part of the bargain. And yet Nathaniel now does. Yes, he was weak. Yes, he was petty. Yes, he had treated Nathaniel with consistent disdain. But the man was a minister, one of the 300 in the government, and he had to take a man. Why is it important that Nathaniel thinks? And he hadn't taken the amulet. It's not just that he's a minister and he's a part of the government. Those are two reasons why Nathaniel suddenly kind of feels something. The third reason is the really important one. Totally morality. It's not funded by yeah, ambition. No. Okay, it's not about ambition. Louder. Arthur hasn't done anything wrong. Who has? Nathaniel has. Okay. Yeah, Loveless has too, in stealing the amulet. But it's because of Nathaniel that Loveless is even there. So he's he's starting to get himself in position to do what? To do exactly the opposite of what Underwood did years ago, a year or two ago. He's going to attempt to protect Underwood. He bit his lip. Loveless was a criminal. Who could tell what he might do? Uh, Bartimaeus could, right? Bartimaeus has already told him. He's already murdered to get this thing. You think another murder or two or three or four is going to stop him? Let Underwood take the blame. He deserved it. So he's, this is his thought process. He had never stuck up for Nathaniel. He had sacked Mrs. Lutians. Let him suffer too. Let him get what he has coming. Why had Nathaniel put the amulet in the study in the first place if not to protect himself when Loveless came? Now, that's kind of interesting because we're not told that before. The narrator's taking us inside Nathaniel's mind. He's kind of saying, you know, kid, <laughs> this is what you planned for all along. He would stay out of the way, as the Jenny had said, get ready to run, if necessary. So it's like he starts making his way downstairs. He sees them going to the study, and he has these thoughts. And he's kind of like, kind of like Gollum in, in The Lord of the Rings, in, in the chapter the. Uh, Stairs of Kirith Ungol, when he's thinking of what he's leading Sam and Frodo to, she loved the giant spider, that will kill Sam and Frodo, spit out the ring, and then Gollum will get it back. He's got that plan going on, and then he sees Frodo and Sam asleep, tired, withered, old, and he feels pity for them, and he kind of goes back and forth mentally. Okay? Nathaniel's being troubled by what here? His conscience. It's something we don't see it trouble him very often. It's almost like he doesn't have one. Okay? He could not run. He could not hide. What does that mean? He has to do something for himself? No. That was the advice of a demon. Treacherous and sly. Well, you shouldn't take the advice of a demon, right? Running and hiding were not the actions of an honorable magician. 
Where do we ever hear that magicians are honorable? Honorable? What did he do? He used his power to put down others. Well, he also used it to defend his female friends. True. True. Okay, I'll accept that. If he let his master face loveless alone, how would he live with himself again? When his master suffered, Mrs. Underwood would suffer. He couldn't allow that. No, there was no help for it. Now that the crisis went upon him, Nathaniel found to his surprise and or he had to act. He had to intervene. He had to intervene. Why? To save himself? No. For somebody else. Okay? With every step, his common sense screamed at him to turn and flee. Because what does common sense say? What is one of the characteristics of sentient life? Self-preservation. Self-preservation says, run. Honor says, I just wrote this on a student's paper in another class the other day. A student talked about, you know, honor is something you put on and off. I said, no, honor is the moral compass that guides someone to do the thing that is often inconvenient, that's often hard. Like the 29-year-old the year old guy in the Waffle House at, at, um, in Antioch yesterday. Okay? You see some, cra some crazy naked guy with an AR-15 and an army jacket, and he's trying to bust into the restroom that you're hiding in. You got two choices. Target or fight back. He fought back, okay? To run would be to fail Mrs. Underwood. He would go in there and what? Tell the truth. Okay, so to protect Mrs. Underwood, does that mean he has to tell the truth? Could he weave some grand glorious lie? Maybe if he is really fast on his feet in terms of thought processes and speaking. Okay, so he goes down, and Lovelace says, page 290, middle of the page, well, 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 what have we here? And he sees the amulet. No, you're framing me. Can't imagine what you thought you could do with this, he says. Under it, 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 it wasn't me. Nathaniel, bottom of 290, 291. He heard a new voice speaking, hi, and ye his own. I took it. The person that you want is me. Silence that followed this statement lasted almost five seconds. Both magicians spun around on the instant, only to stare at him open-mouthed in shock. Underwood's eyebrows rise high. Loveless has an uncomprehending frown. Why does Loveless has a frown? Okay, notice, it's uncomprehending. Loveless doesn't understand why Nathaniel is standing there right at that moment. He's gonna, we're going to get an explanation. Nathaniel, it was I. He knows nothing about it. You can leave him alone. Notice, he doesn't even name his master. He's just kind of like saying, let the riffraff go. He's beneath us. Underwood blinks, shakes his head. What are you talking? You don't know what we're... Get out of here. Okay? How did you get out of your room? Right? Because you put a spell on it. Essentially put a spell on it. Loveless. Um, a moment, Arthur. Perhaps you're being too hasty. Underwood. Don't be absurd. This stripling cannot have committed the crime. He would have had to bypass my fire axe for a start, not to mention your own defenses. Loveless. And raise a genie of the 14th level. That too. Exactly. The notion is, wait, can't, I found this brat with summoning equipment and Adelbrand's pentacle chalked out in his room. He had sophisticated books, the mouth of Ptolemy for one. I assumed he had failed, was over, what if I was wrong? I caught him spying on me in my study. He had a scrying glass, something I'd never given him. If he's capable of that, who knows what other crimes? What is Underwood building toward? 
or, well, not to the state, to Loveless. I mean, he's just given Loveless what? Evidence. Proof. Okay? What is he not doing? He's not defending him. Loveless. Even so, why should he steal from me? This is his looking at Nathaniel going, what gives? Why me? What did I do? Uh, it's a trick, a joke, Nathaniel says. I wanted to get back at you for hitting me that time. I asked the demon, take some, something of yours, anything of all. Anything at all. I hope it wasn't valuable. And note, now he plays dumb. Okay. So, Underwood says, you know, if you escape prison, blah, 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 blah. Underwood, I can only apologize, Loveless. We've both been inconvenienced. This is middle of 293. He's betrayed me, and from you he's stolen the most powerful treasure, this amulet. What has he just done? He's stolen from you this most powerful treasure, this amulet. He just signed his death warrant. He recognizes what the thing is. He also knows what. Recently, the amulet has been stolen. And Simon Loveless has it. That makes Simon Loveless a traitor to the government. And Arthur Underwood now knows that he's a traitor to the government. The color drained from Underwood's cheeks. Why? Oops. He realizes too late. Loveless. Well, John Mandrake, I am almost very impressed. Why only almost? Almost had me. Okay, why else? What did he do? What did Mandrake, Nathaniel, just do? He confessed to his crime. Fool! You could have walked out of here alive. And what? Succeeded. And Underwood would have gotten all the blame. Yes, I've been inconvenienced. Yes, the last few days have been difficult. Now I've got my prize back. All will be well. No, no, no. Don't apologize. To summon a Jenny such as Bartimaeus at your age is no mean achievement. In other words, that's kind of like, way to go, kid. To control him over several days is even more surprising. You left me frustrated, too, which is a rare event, and Underwood ignorant, which is somewhat less unusual. Slam. <laughs> All very clever. Only at the end have you fallen down. That is, only at the very end did you fail. Why? What possessed you to own up to your action? Why, why admit the truth? I might have dealt quietly with Underwood and left you alone. Underwood starts to speak. Love, Shut up. I want to hear. Because it wasn't his fault. Well, okay. It wasn't his fault, says Nathaniel. He knew nothing. Your quarrel was with me, whether you knew it or not. He should be left out of it. That's why I came down. Now, I came down... Surface literal me meaning is simply what? Came downstairs. Yeah, I was at the top of the house. I came downstairs to where you are. But it has a metaphorical meaning too. He didn't fall down. He chose to come down. Yes. I descended to your level. Okay. A sense of the utter futility of his action weighed down upon him. In other words, Nathaniel now knows. Crap. I should have stayed where I was. All right? Loveless chuckles. Some, some childish conception or concept of nobility, is it? Nobility. What does he mean? Jordan Peterson is a, is a Canadian clinical psychologist, author, YouTube uber star, going around the world giving all these lectures, written an Amazon best-selling book, um, 12 Rules for Life or something like that. And one of his 
central point in his 12 rules for life. And people are eating this up like it's manna from heaven, like they've never heard this before. And when I say people, I mean millennials, 18 to 35 year olds. One of the central points, take responsibility for your actions. It's it. You mess up, admit it. I messed up. I screwed up. Not the government made me screwed up, Joseph made me screwed up, Rashid made me, everybody else made me screwed up. No. Nathaniel takes responsibility. Loveless says, oh, so that's some childish notion of nobility. I guessed as much. I thought that's what it was. And because it's childish, what does Loveless mean by that? Okay. Okay. St. Paul says, when I was a child, I thought as a child. Now that I'm a man, I don't think as a child anymore. In other words, we have ideas that we hold when we're children that we tend to grow out of. Like this one. Okay. The honorable course of action. Heroic, but stupid. Where did you get that notion from? Not from Underwood. Double slam. Because Underwood's neither honorable, nor heroic, nor shows any nobility. I robbed you because you wronged me. Taking credit for it. Also applying that wonderful old logic. Two wrongs make a right. I robbed you. Therefore, you smacked me, I'm going to smack you back. Revenge. Good old basic revenge. I wanted to get back at you. That's all there is to it. Punish me if you want. I don't care. Punish me means what? Leave them alone. They're not in this except for the little problem that Underwood opened his mouth once too many times and mentioned that kiss of death word, amulet. Underwood's hoping the same thing. Notice, yeah, yeah, take him. <coughs> okay. And Loveless says, I shall administer his punishment shortly. Good, after disposing of you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. what? What? <laughs> It's possible you don't know what this object is, but I can't take that chance. And so what does Underwood try to do? Exactly. I'll be quiet. Promise. The smirk extended across Lovelace's face. And notice what else Underwood said. Take him. Kill him as he digs his nails into Nathaniel's skin. Such loyalty from a master to his apprentice. Very touching. You see, John Underwood and I are giving you a final lesson in the art of being a magician. And perhaps with our help, you will understand your error in owning up to me today. You believed in the notion of the honorable magician who takes responsibility for his actions. Mere propaganda. Propaganda is what? PR by the state. To, to, for what purpose? To get people to believe certain things. Whether those certain things are true or false. There is no honor. Okay? Mere propaganda. Such a thing does not exist. What does he mean? Not propaganda, honor. There is no honor, no nobility, no justice. I mean, think about this worldview for a moment. If he's true, if he's correct, then what does that say we, everyone, should do? Lie to begin with. And then what? Get what you want out of life. Forget everybody else. Don't think of anybody else. Stab your way 
you know, through the backs of those who are ahead of you to climb the corporate ladder. If somebody's in your way, push them in front of that truck heading down the street. If somebody <coughs> bothers you, shut them up. It's all about what? Numero uno. Right? Look out for yourself. Every magician acts only for himself, seizing each opportunity he can. When he is weak, he avoids danger, which is why second raiders plot away within the system. Like Underwood. Arthur knows all about that, don't you, Arthur? How do you think Rupert Devereaux came to power? His master killed the previous prime minister in a coup 20 years ago, and he inherited the title. That's the truth of it. That's how things are always done. When I use the amulet next week, notice he is doing what every villain does, monologuing too long and giving away. I will be following in a grand tradition, reaching back to Gladstone. He says, nope, your stupidity in coming here hasn't changed anything. Why? Because everybody in this house will die. <laughs> An image of Mrs. Underwood downstairs in the kitchen flashed through Nathaniel's mind. Please. He tears up. Oh, you're weak, just like your master. Okay? Underwood, take the boy, take the boy. Okay? And Bartimaeus shows up, 298. I landed directly on my master into the, as the form of a gargoyle, grabbed him unceremoniously around the neck, and since Jabor blocked the window, bounded out the door. Okay. Nathaniel, page 299, is crying out, Mrs. Underwood, Mrs. Underwood. Go back to the beginning of that paragraph. The second golden rule of escaping, make no unnecessary noise. Why? So nobody hears you. And what's he doing? Top of his lungs. Okay. He's going towards the fire. What fire? Nathaniel wants to rescue her. Bartimaeus is saying, save yourself. Why is Bartimaeus saying, save yourself? He can also say things. Yeah, he's thinking of himself and old Chokey down there at the bottom of the Thames. Okay. Page 300. My master is dead, Bartimaeus says. Swallowed whole, most probably. Meaning? Quick death. But Mrs. Underwood is no doubt with her husband. You can't help her now. Okay. So, page 301. Nathaniel again, Mrs. Underwood, would not want you to die too, Bartimaeus guesses. Yes, it is your fault, but uh, don't blame yourself. You know, life's for the living or whatever. Why does he say life's for the living or, or whatever? He doesn't know what to say here. He's not human. He doesn't know how to console a human after someone's death. Psychology of this sort is not my strong suit. I haven't a clue what motivates most humans and care even less. With magicians, it's usually pretty simple. They fall into three distinct types. Motivated by ambition, greed, or paranoia. Underwood, for example, paranoid. Loveless, Ambition. The boy? Ambitious, yeah, but still unformed. Hence this sudden, ridiculous burst of altruism. Unformed mean, if Nathaniel goes on the trajectory he is on, what will happen? That altruistic streak that he is showing in wanting to save Mrs. Underwood, it'll get squashed. And he'll become... A new Simon Lovelace. Okay. So they do escape, and we're running out of time. Let's see here. Um, go to part three. They get into a unused building. It's cold. Nathaniel has barely the clothes on his back. Bartimaeus says, page 311, you know, I can make a fire if you want. Um, 
He finally does ask for it. And let's see here. Bottom of 312. Bartimaeus says, um, most would think popping in to tell a powerful enemy you'd pinched his treasure. Not a good idea. I had to. Sure, you had a brilliant plan. Be silent. Oh, that was your plan? Simple one. I'll say that much. Still, don't forget it was my life you were risking too back there. I had another master like you once. He had the same mulish obstinacy. Seldom acted in his own best interests. Okay. He is telling Nathaniel, you didn't act in your own best interest. I had another master like that once. Guess what? It's the one whose form he is now taking. It's Ptolemy. The same Ptolemy whose book Nathaniel had out. Okay? The young magician that Bartimaeus said he loved. He didn't live long. Never mind. Okay. So, what does Bartimaeus advise Nathaniel to do? Leave. Like, the country. Not just London. He says, go to Prague. Why? Well, Lovelace knows you've escaped. He'll be looking for you. Abroad will be safest. Why should I go to Prague? Magicians there might help you. Good beer, too. Okay. Page 314, Nathaniel says, I don't need your suggestions. And he's thinking. Lovelace had said that there was no such thing as honor, that every magician acted only for himself. Very well. Nathaniel would take him at his word. He would not make such a mistake again. Okay, now earlier, he had listened to Bartimaeus, and he thought, should I really take the advice of a demon? Because what did Bartimaeus say? Save yourself. Save your skin. Now, he's heard Simon Lovelace. He knows what kind of person Simon Lovelace is. And he's going to follow his advice? Hmm. But Lovelace had made an error of his own. He had underestimated his enemy. Well, who's the enemy? Nathaniel. Twelve years old. Lovelace is in his twenties. What's notice by calling Lovelace his enemy, what is Nathaniel doing? Equating himself. Okay. So they keep talking, and Nathaniel says, I'm not setting you free yet. Why not? Lovelace said something about the amulet. And what's going to happen next week? Okay. Page 318. Nathaniel says, I can't let you go. Why? I owe it to my master. He was a good man. No, he wasn't. That's not the reason at all. It isn't justice or honor that drives you, boy, now, but guilt. You can't take the consequences of your action. What are the consequences of his having Bartimaeus steal the amulet? The Underwoods, you know, moldering, excuse me, um, smoking remains in their home. Okay? So, going after Lovelace is suicide. But he's going to. Okay? Um, they get the newspaper. Let's see here. Okay, um, we're going to come back, or when we come back, we're probably going to pick up, I don't know, I'll say around chapter 33, because we're just about out of time. All right, um, as I said, the exam's posted on the announcements, and it's been emailed to your D2L email, it is due a week from today, 10 a.m., in my office. Okay? April 30th. Pardon? No. A week from today.
read the directions on it. It's very clear. Right? A week from today, that's why I posted it over the weekend to give you a little extra time. If I'd waited until Wednesday, then I would make it do a week from Wednesday. 